Welcome, everyone. Mr. Gene Brown, our Vice President of Marketing and Public Relations. Thanks, Jeff. Good morning. Thanks uh, for coming out to Trump National. I'm not positive what makes it a national golf club, but uh, I'm sure it attracts people from all over, and they're helping to keep the uh, demand for gold up. So uh, everything has its role. But a great spot for a great car. Uh, and it's been, though, about 16 or 18 months since we last met at a press conference for Suzuki. And an awful lot has changed in the economy and the auto industry since then. And really, it's a, it's a whole new world for the car business. And I want to just take a moment to talk about what that means for the business and for Suzuki. A year and a half ago, when we had our last press conference, the auto industry was on a tear. We'd been setting records for years. We were consistently around 16, 17 million unit annual sales rate, and in some months, over 18 million. So times were good. Consumer confidence was high, uh, perhaps irrationally exuberant, as the phrase was later applied, uh, at record levels in July of 07, just two years ago today, the highest ever recorded. And the stock market seemed unstoppable. It only went one way, up, up, up. We were up over 14,000. Um, more recently than I care to admit. But after that, as we all know, the bottom kind of fell out and uh, the auto industry took a huge dip down as low as 9.1 million SAR earlier this year, which was the lowest since 1982. So in 27 years, we hadn't seen a SAR that low. Uh, and we're still running at less than 10. The uh, consumer confidence came right down with it and earlier this year was the lowest ever recorded. And the stock market, of course, uh, we probably all know what happened there, down at its low to barely over 6,000 from over 14,000. And uh, I'm sure that makes investments in places like Trump National a little tougher. But um, downturns bring with them, as many have said, opportunity. And that's what we see in it uh, at Suzuki. And I want to talk a little bit then about what's happening next. Well, the economy in general, of course, is already starting to recover. Car sales are inching back and the forecast from Global Insight is that over the next two years the industry will recover by about 45 percent. That's very rapid growth but it just shows how far we had fallen. And the good news is a lot of this growth is forecast to be in compact cars and SUVs which of course are historical Suzuki strengths. So that's a very good sign for us and the consumers are starting to feel the good news in the economy generally. Consumer confidence up 50 percent just since earlier this year. Now, of course, it came from a pretty low point. We're not back to where we were, but confidence is on the rise, and even the stock market. A year ago, if I was talking about 9,000, everyone would have been in a panic, and now everyone thinks it's terrific. We're over 9,000, so uh, uh, it is up quite a bit from its lows of a little over 6,000. So there's a lot of signs that things are going to come back, but it still had a big impact on how people think and act, particularly from a consumer point of view. And thrift is reestablishing itself as a core value in American society. It's something that it's safe to say we kind of got away from in the 80s and 90s. And when you're making money hand over fist by doing nothing but owning a house, it's pretty easy to forget the importance of thrift. Those days are clearly gone, although housing is stabilizing. And uh, thrift is uh, reasserting itself, which we think is very good for brands like Suzuki and non-premium brands generally. And we think it's also good for the car we're going to show you today. So how is Suzuki doing in the midst of all this incredible turmoil, downturns and upturns? As I said, life was so good it seemed too good to be true for a while, and then it turned out it was too good to be true. Things went down in a New York minute. Now they're starting to improve, but it's a new world order with a new mindset. Well, the answer about how Suzuki's been doing is that throughout all of this, Suzuki Motor Corporation has remained profitable which in and of itself is quite a claim. We were one of only two major car companies in Japan to post a profit in the fiscal year just ended this past March, and uh, we're, our outlook remains positive. This has been on the strength of a significant number of new products over the last few years globally in all our categories that have really helped drive that kind of result, including the Swift, of course, which has won 17 awards internationally. Uh, for being such a terrific product, but also in our motorcycle and marine categories. We're very well known in the U.S. for motorcycle, and our bikes are uh, consistently known for winning championships in the sport bike arena and offering unmatched fuel injection technology, which is really critical in an engine of that size. And our marine engines, as those of you who boat know, are absolute leaders in their class. We've been a leader in four-stroke innovation for years with motors now that range all the way up to 300 horsepower and set standards for performance, durability, and efficiency. Absolutely terrific motors, ask anyone who's in boating. 
So these are the kinds of products that have really helped us continue a history of great profitability. In fact, a history that spans 57 years now that we've remained profitable as a corporation. That's longer than the entire time we've been in the car business, which means we've made money every year we've been in the car business. I don't think very many companies can make that claim. And during that time, we've now sold more than 40 million cars. In America, we're seen as a very small car company. A lot of consumers don't even know us. But 40 million cars gives you some perspective on the real scale of Suzuki's business. Recently, we've had success in our home market as well, with the Wagon R being the number one selling car in Japan for four consecutive years, obviously contributing to that success story. So that's how we're uh, looking globally. We pulled in over 30 billion in sales last year. That was over 2.3 million cars and trucks and 3.5 million motorcycles and ATVs. Once again, I bet the average American consumer would be surprised by the scale, particularly in the automotive business, where we have now risen to the number 11 position of all brands globally from number 15 just five years ago. And to put that in context, globally, if you consider only brands over 1,000 units, there are still nearly 150 nameplates on cars out there, brands. And Suzuki is 11th out of those 150. So it's a pretty good position. Here in the U.S., we're trying to take that strength, the core product strength, and the great strides we're making and really uh, persist to use it as the basis for longer-term success. And uh, you'll see that uh, our product lineup has really been evolving quickly over the last few years. Our products are now much more aspirational. They're better looking, they're fun to drive, and they're all backed by real Japanese quality and America's number one warranty. And this includes the SX4 Crossover, SX4 Sedan, the Grand Vitara, and Equator shown here, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And they really represent a fundamental change to our strategy, globally and in the U.S., a shift from just basic transportation solutions to products that are great looking, fun to drive, and well represented by the SX4 series that's now our number one seller, and particularly by the car we're here to focus on today. So, what does that mean for our consumers? Well, we've seen a huge shift in a very short period of time in our consumers. I mentioned the consumer at large is undergoing a metamorphosis. Our consumer has as well. We're attracting a more affluent, better educated buyer with better credit scores than we have in the past. And they lead a much more active, adventurous, fun-loving lifestyle that really fits with all our products, Motorcycle Marine and our new line of autos. We call them confident explorers, and we call their lifestyle traveling light and living fully, a lifestyle that Suzuki is all about reinforcing. But this is not just about some marketing tagline. This is an approach that is generating legitimate business results for us, this transformation in our brand and product. And one example is that we have the most improved residual values in the industry, up from 34% in 2005 to 48% for the current model year. That's the most improved of any brand and puts us ahead of all of our domestic and Korean competitors. And just as one proof point, the SX4 Sport has a 36-month residual percentage greater than or equal to that of the Toyota Camry or Toyota Corolla. Again, I think a lot of your readers would be surprised to see that Suzuki is so strong in this area, and it's really driven by a lot of the improvements in quality that we've been bringing to the market as well. We were recognized recently by J.D. Power as having the most improved quality of any brand in the industry this past year. And if you take a look at their release, you'll see that we placed in the top 10 ahead of many brands that might surprise you. So while they don't want us to talk about who we beat, I encourage you to go take a look for yourself, learn from J.D. Power how Suzuki stacks up relative to the industry. I think you'll be surprised. And it's been recognized by independent consumer magazines as well. SX4, as an example, was recognized as the most reliable in its category for 2008 by one of the leading consumer magazines, who also doesn't want to be quoted, but you all know the business. You do your uh, background research on SX4, you'll find this kind of recognition in a lot of the consumer magazines. So let me touch briefly on what's happened leading up to the Kazashi. It really, in many ways, began with the SX4, which we launched in crossover form as the most affordable all-wheel drive car in America, and then later added the Sport <coughs> sedan, which brought to market the most uh, affordable car with standard navigation. Consumer Guide went on this past year to recognize it as a best buy. And if that weren't enough, for model year 10, we're making major updates, including an all-new four-cylinder motor with improved horsepower and improved fuel economy. 
including a continuously variable transmission or an available six-speed manual transmission. And into the lineup, we're adding what you see here, the Sportback model, also on display on the lawn, which takes on the GTI category, but for about $10,000 less than a GTI has risen to today. So it takes our five-door body, takes this great new powertrain and transmission, adds the Sport package, and is just a terrific car. Also in our lineup, of course, the Grand Vitara. Most of you are familiar with this. Consumer Reports also recognize Grand Vitara as a Best Buy this past year, and it remains the most off-road capable SUV you can buy for under $20,000. In Model Year 09, which is on sale now, we completely overhauled the powertrains. We added a new 3.2 liter V6 with 45 more horsepower than the old V6, yet better fuel economy and lower emissions. And we also added an all-new four-cylinder motor, which is perfect given the trends we've seen in the economy recently with fuel prices and other concerns. And if that weren't enough for Model Year 10, We've teamed up with Garmin yet again, and we're making navigation standard in all Grand Vitaras, making it the most affordable SUV you can buy with standard navigation. So a lot to be proud of in those products. And we went on to appeal better to our motorcycle marine owners with the Equator, giving them class-leading power and towing, as well as a bed long enough to haul a motorcycle. Peterson's four-wheel and off-road magazine quickly recognized it as a great vehicle and awarded us the 4x4 of the year. So equator has been a terrific addition to this lineup and a natural fit with our other product lines. But if all these product enhancements weren't enough, I want to touch on one additional enhancement we've made to our business recently, and that is an overhaul of our leadership team. We have completely realigned our top management, and they have a simple charter straight from Japan, generate more success and greater profitability here in the United States. And really, the, the product we're showing today represents the next stage of our evolution. We went from the transportation products to Grand Vitar, Essex 4, and Equator. Now we have a completely Suzuki-designed and engineered vehicle, all new bumper to bumper, that is clearly, we hope you'll agree, our most spectacular product yet. It is, as Kevin mentioned, the Kazashi. That's the final name. And as I told you in New York last year, Kazashi means something great is coming, and it's coming very soon. The question you may be asking is, does the world really need yet another mid-sized sedan? It's a hotly contested segment. There are a lot of competitors playing for market share. And the answer in simple terms is, well, it really doesn't need just another vanilla sleeping pill on wheels or another soulless transportation appliance. We did a little bit of uh, research to try and figure out what was going on in this segment, and one of the quotes from our own brief is, typical owners in this category, we found, are status quo happy, middle of the road, middle agers, possessed by a trance-like contentment for dependability and practicality. Now, I don't know if you agree with that exactly, <laughs> but you can see what we're trying to, uh, to go against. Instead, the world is missing a world-class sports sedan that the average person can afford. And what consumers have told us they want is dynamic excitement that doesn't compromise their comfort, sophisticated upscale design that doesn't empty their wallets. And that's what we're trying to address with this car. They really want refined handling and craftsmanship that's normally found in a European sports sedan, but blended with the quality, reliability, and advanced engineering of a modern Japanese sedan. In short, they want a premium car without the premium price. And that's what we are bringing to the market with Kazashi. It will be the most important launch in American Suzuki's history, and clearly the purest expression yet of the new Suzuki brand. And it will help us attract a new type of buyer, even beyond what we've already experienced a prime buyer coming into Suzuki showrooms to help buy Kazashi. It also plays to the largest segment in the entire market in the U.S. 1.7 million cars a year. I think there's plenty of room for a car with something a little special. It's also a natural for us because that category gets 47% of its buyers from owners of compact SUVs and compact cars. That's what Suzuki's been selling for years. So it's a natural destination for Essex 4 and Grand Vitara owners when they decide to move up. So with Suzuki and Kazashi, we think we're poised for something big. And next, I'd like to give you the video version of the preview you'll have out on the lawn in a few minutes. Take a look at the Kazashi.
So, to take another line from the research we did developing this car, the midsize sedan category can remain a foam-lined tome of unexciting consumers, mindless suffering, the tyranny of vehicles with lackluster design, soulless perfection and bland utilitarian practicality, or they can have the car you just saw there. So to give you a little more insight into that car, let me invite Steve Yunin up to take you through the details. All right, thanks, Gene. Thanks. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Steve Yunin. I'm the Director of Product Planning here at American Suzuki, and uh, I want to thank you for joining us on such a uh, beautiful day here at Trump National. Um, you know, in developing the uh, Kazashi, as Gene was mentioning, our aim was not to just bring a driver's car, but a driver's car that also had quality and craftsmanship as well as a design aesthetic that would stir the emotions and the passions of the enthusiast car buyer. Now, to do so, we had to establish some uh, fairly ambitious targets, some would say. And in doing so, we wanted to select some cars that were not just exciting to drive and were very agile, but also cars that had personality and character. And I think that you all have uh, probably had a chance to drive some of these cars here. And we didn't limit ourselves to just cars that are sold in the United States. We picked some cars that frankly have a quite a bit of character and maybe even some rough edges because we know that's what makes some cars fun to drive. It's that character that's imbued in the vehicle. And for us, the pursuit of perfection is not about making an isolated chamber that is devoid of all noise and, and senses. Rather, what we were trying to achieve with the Kazashi is build a vehicle with personality and character that, you know, while it may even have a little bit of flair, it's nothing synthetic. It's meant to be an authentic reflection of the performance-minded engineers that helped develop it. So to that, in that sense, we feel that the three main elements in developing the vehicle's product concept were an upscale design that was both uh, sophisticated in its execution but also had the atmosphere of a premium sedan, backed by craftsmanship, Japanese craftsmanship and quality that with attention to detail through and through allowed the vehicle to stand on its own, not just as a pretty face, but a vehicle with real uh, quality throughout. And while our time is short today, and I can't take you through all the engineering um, uh, methods used to make the vehicle as high quality as uh, we believe it is, uh, if you join us for our October Drive event, we'll have a, a more technical presentation to share with you to, to show you some of the things that were done by our engineers in Japan. And then performance uh, was the third basic uh, foundation for the product concept. And not just the driving dynamic performance that makes the vehicle exciting to drive, but also we didn't forget about safety, and that's a key element in, in our performance story we want to tell you today. Now, we feel we'll really delight our customers, our performance-enthused customers, as the responsive handling and the crisp and uh, precise steering, because we feel that will allow our, our buyers to get the feedback and the, and the road feel that they need to understand adhesion limits on the road that they're driving on. And with that sense of confidence, they can take the, their corners and take the drives that they want to experience with a certain amount of aggression and, and fun to drive pleasure. By being able to extract the most from the Kazashi suspension and chassis, we feel that's what's going to bring the fun to drive spirit to this vehicle. Now, the uh, firm handling characteristics were complemented uh, by a composed ride that can absorb broken pavement and the rough roads of the U.S. with a nicely dampened field. And we wanted a ride that did not punish you just because you want to drive a performance car. And this was done through extensive real-world testing in both in Europe and in the United States, not just on simulated roads on a test track or on a hypothetical model on a computer, but it took countless days and weeks to actually get the uh, suspension tuned right uh, for our engineers. And this was accomplished by a multi-link rear suspension that was all new for Kazashi. And this task was also helped with the performance, uh, some performance shocks and low-profile 18-inch tires that are available on this, on this vehicle. We also gave it advanced four-wheel disc uh, ABS system. But to ensure shorter stopping uh, distances as well as uh, a firm pedal feel, we also brought in Akibono to provide some of the uh, brake components as well. And if some of you aren't familiar with Akibono, they not only supply brakes for cars and race cars, but also for the Japanese bullet trains. Now, what beats at the heart of Kazashi is, an, is a new 2.4 liter high output four-cylinder engine. And while we don't know what the competitor's 2000 specs are yet, we do anticipate that the Kazashi will have class-leading standard horsepower when it, it is introduced later this fall. Now, the engine is mated to a six-speed manual transmission as well as a performance-tuned CVT 
which will have paddle shifters for direct driver control. But one of the great stories of Kazashi is the safety story in terms of its performance capabilities. And this vehicle really lives up to, um, to what we're promising you in the sense that it actually delivers on the safety five years before the government mandates to, with uh, its ability to meet the, pulse, uh, the side pole crash test and the rear uh, impact tests that, uh, that are out there. They're actually uh, coming online now. The Kazashi really delivers something unique in the marketplace. And our buyers will actually have some of the safest, safest safety systems out there with eight standard airbags that uh, will give them the most protection in its class. In fact, eight airbags is something even some of the luxury makes charge you extra for, but we're going to include it as standard equipment on a Kazashi. And this is all backed up with a new uh, standard stability control system that's not just a, a, a conventional stability control system. Our engineers face some of the same frustrations that you may have all had when you're taking a corner with, uh, with a little bit of spirit and you find that the traction control system and the stability control system comes down on you and starts grabbing your brakes and shutting down your engine power. Well, they designed a system that's so unique that it actually gives the driver more control and pushes out the, uh, the limits, the electronic limits of where the activation starts so it doesn't impede on your fun but still provides you an adequate safety net. And those kind of details are the kind of details we'll share with you uh, a little bit later uh, in October. Now, we backed up the safety story by drawing on the heritage of Suzuki's 50 years ex of experience in all-wheel drive traction. And that manifests itself with an available all-wheel drive system in Kazashi. And like all of the Suzukis that we sell, the Kazashi will have that all-wheel drive system available. And it's a new generation, uh, second generation I all-wheel drive system that is quicker and uh, lighter than the last generation that we've had on SX4. We believe this will actually set Suzuki's apart in the midsize class by offering something that's typically not found unless you're going to the premium car category. But the real treat also, in addition to the fun to drive spirit of this car, is that premium and upscale feel of the interior. We think that when you sit behind the wheel in those sports seats that we have designed for you, you'll really get a sense that you're in a car costing thousands more. And in fact, last fall, when we had a consumer product clinic, many of our uh, participants actually thought that the unbadged vehicle that they were evaluating was something that of a premium sports sedan, something like an Audi or an Infiniti, as mentioned by, by name themselves. And uh, we think that the non-traditional materials and the design execution of the interior, along with some of the standard features you don't normally find a vehicle in this price class, such as a standard dual zone climate control and a standard keyless push button start system, are the kind of things that we, we believe that even the most discerning buyer will, uh, will come to appreciate not only a car that's more expensive, but a car especially in this price class. We also Im embedded the interior of the vehicle with extensive sound insulation, not to completely, again, make an isolation chamber, but to keep out unwanted noise from wind noise or unwanted road noise or tire slap, but to still allow some of that performance characteristic of the engine sound to come through, but a nice balance we think that they'll appreciate. Now, we're very proud of this vehicle. and We're excited about the launch later this year of the Kazashi. And to that end, uh, we invited a, a two key members of our Kazashi development team here to be with us today. And if I could introduce uh, our chief designer, uh, Teddy Taneko, Kaneko, who's here with us today. <laughs> and also with us today is Hide Kamashiro, who's uh, chief engineer. <laughs> and if you'd like to come up here, uh, Hide has a few things to share about his uh, engineering perspective on developing this vehicle. And we thought that you might find, uh, find some uh, thoughtful comments from uh, Hide. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Good morning. It is a great pleasure that I am participating in this global introduction. Since I received this assignment, we have been focused on the many, many challenges in our engineering brief. It was quite a long, long, and tough journey. Simply speaking, my team and I were charged with engineering a world-class sedan for the middle of the segment in both size and price. To begin, we look at the best in the segment. And no, I'm not speaking to the mainstream sedan. Instead, we looked at Alfa Romeo 159 Acura TSX and Volkswagen Passat because that offer both an entertaining dynamic and rewarding ownership. 
and all three represent the best of their national character. We started Kizashi with its platform, a very rigid structure, in combination with an all independent suspension and four wheel disc brake. We were, if you will, creating from a menu. And we took Kizashi to Europe on both tracks and challenging country roads to better tune its suspension. And we took Kizashi to the Alps to improve the braking performance. Finally, we tested its hot weather capabilities in the Valley and chilled it with your northern Minnesota winter. This, of course, isn't the first time for Suzuki Motor Corporation to venture beyond Japan in its product development and testing. From our motorcycle team's first visit to the Isle of Man 50 years ago this year, to the early development of the most recent Swift and SX4 in the early part of this century, our chassis dynamics have been heavily influenced by needs and laws of Europeans. In combination with what you might call an obsessive attention to detail, the end result is a sports sedan we are proud to build and our customers will be proud to own. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you in October. Thank you very much. Well, as you can see, Kazashi really has been very carefully and thoughtfully engineered to be very entertaining to drive, and I do encourage you to join us in October for the event that will be both on road and on track, because to really appreciate this car, we think we have to let you do things that would be illegal on public roads. Safety, to make sure that if you overdo it, there's no risk, um, way ahead of its time on safety. All-weather capability, tested in a variety of environments, a premium interior and exterior, we believe, and quality and durability of the sort that I already referred to Suzuki recently getting noted for. So the Kazashi really brings to life that Suzuki spirit that you've often seen expressed in our other products, a real passion for the behind the wheel experience or behind the handlebars or behind the tiller, whatever the case may be. But this is the kind of lifestyle that Suzuki products are intended to engage. Kazashi will do it. And the next step is to show you the real Kazashi and we'll escort you out to go uh, show you the real thing. Thank you. Any further ado, gentlemen, do your thing. The vehicle I'm bringing up here right now is actually more in line with a production version. It's got the factory specs in terms of wheels and aerodynamic trim. This model here we have is a uh, addition we're working on as a special uh, sp special model will be introduced at a later date potentially with some of the trimmings you see here. But uh, as you can tell from the exterior design, some of the key elements is the aggressive uh, aggressive stance and the flared fenders, along with the taut overall dimensions and short overhangs to give it that communication of agility. In addition to that, we have the bulging hood and a detailed headlights to signify both intelligence and strength and power as well. And uh, if you take a look at kind of from the, from the rear uh, angle view, you can see the strong shoulders that communicates that priority and safety and security as well. Now the overall exterior dimensions, uh, we've given you in their press kits, but uh, it's about 183 inches in overall length and roughly 72 inches in overall width. That puts us, wheelbase is about uh, 107 inches overall wheelbase roughly, and that puts us uh, wheelbase and width about the same as a Volkswagen Passat and a mid-range Volvo S60. But uh, with the trimmer overall dimensions of, of the overhang, it's actually just slightly shorter, but preserving the overall interior space of that of, a, uh, of those vehicles. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Eddie, and uh, he'll take you through some of the more detailed features of the interior and some of the components under hood and under body. Thank you very much. I'm Eddie Ray in product planning. I'd like to guys actually invite you guys closer to the vehicles and take a 
closer look at the vehicles here. Anyways, as Steve had mentioned earlier about one of the development goals of this vehicle is a all new four cylinder uh, uh, efficient powertrain with an emphasis on low NVH. So we don't want to isolate the driver, however, provide them the noise that the, uh, the appropriate noise for sportiness, character, and sporty feel. It's an all alloy design with steel liners for enhanced durability, and it features a 10.0 to 1 compression ratio, which runs on regular, regular fuel. This engine also features balance shafts for improved NVH and reduced the harshness of the engine, and made it to the engine is a sport-tuned CVT transmission also available for the more sporty drivers, a six-speed MT manual transmission for those who want a little more flair in the driving experience. What you can see here, and, and a really important part of the vehicle, is the highly rigid body structure of the vehicle. That you, it manifests itself in a few ways for the consumer with improved handling, improved NVH characteristics, and a, a more a safer vehicle overall. And this is where very, uh, fairly rare in the, in the category We have such a stiff uh, structure of the vehicle. Um, attached to the chassis of the vehicle are, uh, is a suspension, which provides a world-class driving experience for this segment, including in the front is a front McPherson strut setup with KYB shocks, and the rear is a five-link setup, providing a very sophisticated and sporty ride without jarring you. Jarring you. Um, extensive aluminum was used inside the vehicle, under the vehicle, including the uh, rear control arms, the knuckles, as well as the rear calipers for improved weight better fuel efficiency and more improved ride. The wheels available are 16, 17, and this vehicle is equipped 18 inch wheels. And for those who want a more sporty appearance, sporty, a little more sporty ride, the available uh, 18 inch are Dunlop, Dunlop tires, which provide a very sense of, a good sense of control and a good sense of balance without having a very stiff and harsh ride, sometimes associated with larger wheels and tires. Another thing you cannot see is the aerodynamics under the vehicle. Sure, the outside is very clean, very aerodynamic, but much emphasis was included on under the vehicle for reduced noise and reduced drag under the vehicle for improved fuel efficiency as well. There's an engine cover underneath as well as an underbody cover and an area under the rear bumper for let the air uh, slice through the air. If you guys uh, are up to it, feel free to take a peek under the vehicle for it's just as beautiful underneath as it is on the outside. Coupled to the suspension is the all-wheel drive of the vehicle. This sets this car apart based in this category. This system is different than that from the SX4, and it's an exclusive design for this vehicle, designed with low mechanical losses. So when you get an all-wheel drive, there might be a small reduction in fuel economy, but nothing significant. And when the system works by detecting slippage using the ESP sensors, whether it's a brake sensor or a steering sensor, once it's detected, power moves from the front wheels to the rear wheels. Again, this helps the safety helps performance and really provides something unique to this category. Speaking about safety, one of the developmental goals of this vehicle was improved visibility. All these vehicles are equipped with projector beam headlights. It's not an option. And the projector beam headlights does provide about 30% more lighting characteristics than a standard halogen light. And you'll notice the outside mirrors, similar to our other Suzuki vehicles, are quite large for improved visibility, giving the customer more confidence when they're around uh, larger vehicles. In the rear, does the headrest do fold for when you're sitting in the front. You have a very big view in the rear behind you. Again, adding comfort and adding confidence in the vehicle when you drive. This car has eight standard airbags, two dual front stage airbags, current airbags which cover both the front row and the rear row. And we didn't forget about the rear passenger, which also has rear side impact airbags something typically found in near luxury or luxury seven as an option, typically not, not standard on the vehicle. Again, part of the active safety feature includes a standard Bosch anti-lock braking system with the four-wheel disc brakes and an ESP that's not overly intrusive. The, the engineers have designed a system in the event of the vehicle starts slipping, whether it's understeer or oversteer. The oversteer situation, the power from the all-wheel drive system will transfer to front pulling the car out of the lateral slip situation. Or if there's understeer, power is sent to the rear wheels, allowing to the driver to regain composure. In the event that you do slip, the ESP then kicks on, allowing a much higher threshold than typically in a vehicle in this segment or category. Again, allowing the driver to have a little more fun, a little more enjoyment out of, out of their vehicle. On the interior, all vehicles are equipped with the uh, sports seats, and they provide a very good lateral support as well as great comfort in long, long trips. All of us, 
working here has spent many hours driving these vehicles and none of us really felt fatigued after driving uh, these cars. You'll also notice the three spoke steering wheel as well as the paddle shifters which are also backlit. You'll notice in the evening that the, all the instrument cluster and the switches in the steering wheel are backlit for easier visibility. And some of the features, again, not typically seen in this category are some of the premiumness of this car. And one of the big things is NVH, so make the car fairly quiet, and, but not overly quiet where you feel like you're sitting in, in a bubble. And one of the ways, in addition to the core engineering design of the vehicle, is to include NVH insulation in the dash area, in the A-pillars, and on the underfloor of the vehicle, including some of the engine room area. There's many soft touch features in this vehicle which enhance the quality and perceived quality of the vehicle, including the door handles, the dash, the center armrest, and even the upper door panels on the, for the front and rear. Uh, also, when you guys sit in the vehicle, you'll see French seams throughout the vehicle, something typically found in more European, more upscale manufacturers. Again, for an enhanced look, enhanced richness, and again, also actually, actually enhances the durability of the vehicle. Some of the convenience features, which you'll notice momentarily, are the uh, uh, three-way heated seat, available three-way heated seats in the vehicle. In addition to the premium leather on this, it's a very high-quality, high-grade leather, we've also equipped the vehicle with rain-sensing wipers, which complement the all-wheel drive appeal of the vehicles. Um, again, rain-sensing wipers is one of those features, again, found in near-luxury luxury vehicles, but it is available now to the mainstream in this vehicle, which go very well with the uh, characteristics and the way we're positioning this vehicle. In the rear, a um, further item that enhances the all-wheel drive characteristics is a center seat pass-through of the vehicle. So if you have long items or skis, you can insert them in the vehicle. So no car is really uh, fully complete with a, without a premium audio system. When we partnered up with Rockford Fosgate early on in development of this program to uh, develop a system that is custom designed for this vehicle that both meets the Rockford brand name and as well as our target consumers who would appreciate the system. The system is a 425 watt 10 speaker system with a dedicated uh, center subwoofer in the rear and a center channel in the front. The rear, one of the benefits of partnering up early with uh, Rockford was their input early and the rear center speaker, we had to actually enhance and stiffen the rear parcel shelf because of the speaker, the subwoofer when it, when it starts, uh, when it's activated. Early on we noticed some more flex than we did appreciate it, so that was stiffened up to really bring out the sound here. Um, one thing I'd like to mention is on this vehicle, it has standard, standard USB, USB ports, which allow anybody to bring their portable MP3 player or iPod connector and connect to the vehicle. Also available is a Bluetooth audio as more states um, adopt hands-free calling. This vehicle will have Bluetooth audio available on a, wide, a very wide scale, not just the uh, 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 higher trim, but the lower trims as well. One, one of the great features of this car and some feature that re I really appreciate is the wireless Bluetooth audio. If your phone or MP3 player or iPod does a, support uh, Bluetooth wireless streaming, this is a great way to attach your head unit without using wires.